So this talk will be about uh, distributed transactions. So uh, let's first talk about what are transactions and uh, distributed transactions. So uh, transactions, according to Wikipedia, is a unit of work performed within a database management system or some similar system against the database and treat it in a coherent and reliable way, independent of other transactions. Uh, when you talk, uh, when I speak of similar system, that's an addition I made to the definition, we can think about that like file system, Git, Mercurial, where you can somehow imagine that each time you commit and push, it's you really make a new transaction and you finish the transaction. Or even sending emails if it's managed properly. So there are uh, four properties of transactions. Uh, they are called the acid, acid properties. So there's the atomicity of transactions. So a transaction is all or nothing. If one part is not uh, fails, the whole transaction fails. That's why you don't put commit in the middle of your code. No, but it needs to be said more than once. Um, it's, there's also consistency. So transactions brings database from one valid state to another valid state. Then there's isolation. Uh, this defines how when you have two transactions at the same time in the same systems, how they interfere. So there's different kind of isolation, different level and so on. Maybe you will talk about that. Anyway. No? Okay. And then there's durability, which uh, ensures that once a transaction has been committed, it will remain so. You, so once you commit, it's there, it's in the file system or whatever you, you use to, to do the persistence, and it will be there. So what is the issue with distributed transactions? Uh, I'll take a small example of sending emails because that's an example we know that fail. And uh, for example, I have a small bit of code that will receive an email store in the database the email and then send this email to a list of contacts, some kind of a mailing list, for example. So this is the simple, uh, simple Python code. So we are into a database transaction. We receive an email. We don't know how it happens, but we receive an email. If the email is not sent, then we send the email to a list of contacts that we have previously from somewhere. Then we mark the email as sent, and then we store the email. And then the transaction goes on, and so it's okay. This can fail in a lot of place, because if you fail the transaction after sending the email, for example, you will have sent the email, but not yet marked the email as sent. But it can also fail when before storing the email. So you have sent the email, marked the email as sent, but not stored yet the information or the email. And so your transaction rollbacks. And the next time you will process the email, you will send it once, twice, three, tri thrice, four times, five times, and so on. <laughs> we know a uh, mailing list system that does that. We won't talk about it, but we had uh, a small video of this uh, software yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say any name. So there is a protocol for distributed transactions because, it, of course, people in computer science have already tackled this problem. And this uh, protocol is named the two-phase commit protocol. Uh, yeah, it's two PC. Uh, there are two kinds of actors in these protocols. The coordinator, 
which is a node amongst all the other nodes that participate in the transactions, which is the one that initiate the protocol. And then you have what they call the core, which is all the other nodes. Uh, and the responsibility of those nodes is to uh, reply when the coordinator asks if they are ready to commit uh, with a message to say, yeah, I'm ready, or no, uh, I'll please abort the transaction. Uh, there is two phases. So there is first the voting phase. So when the coordinator reach the last step of its transactions, he starts the voting phase. So he sends a query to commit to everyone in a court and wait until he receives a reply. Then the court execute what they have to do to verify that uh, they can commit and so on. And then they reply with their agreement or an abort message. Then begin the completion phase. If the coordinator received an agreement from everybody. Uh, he sends a commit message to everybody. The courts complete the operation. And then they send an acknowledgement to the coordinator. And the coordinator completes its transaction. But on the other way, if he receives an abort message, so if any node have uh, failed, he sends, the coordinator sends a rollback to everybody. Everyone in the court rollbacks its transactions. And then he sends uh, an acknowledgement to the coordinator to say, okay, I roll back, it's okay, it's over. And the coordinator can now roll back its transaction. Uh, so, the protocol is not very complicated, in fact. Uh, the Triton implement implementation of this. Uh, give credit where credit is due. We use the ZOP. Uh, we were inspired by the ZOP implementation of this because they have this problem because I don't know if you know ZOP, but they are using SQL uh, to do a lot of transactions. But they also store data, data on what they call the ZOOP object database, which is, in fact, a big file on the file system. And so they have this problem of two transactions at, on two different systems that need to be coordinated. And they created uh, some Python code to do that. So the main idea, we stole somehow their, their IDs. We have the idea that the transaction, Triton transaction will be the coordinator because in the protocol, any node can be the coordinator. In this case, we have chosen to take the transaction, the Triton transaction as the coordinator because often you will only have one transaction, so there is no special need to distribute the, the responsibility. The data managers, are objects that we will create to represent foreign transactions. They will join the Triton transaction. Once we do the commit in the Triton transaction, we start the two-phase commit protocol. And the way to vote for data managers is to uh, raise an error, which will be considered by Triton as an abort message. So the API is five uh, methods. There's TPC begin, which, is, which begins the two-phase commit protocol. Uh, so we say to the guy, OK, you know, need to think about so saving your data. Then there is commit. Uh, this is when we, uh, we say, OK, ensure that there is no conflict or anything. Uh, the changes are not yet permanent. Then there's the vote, which is the last uh, chance for someone to say, no, I cannot uh, commit. 
and voting is done by raising or not an exception. Uh, finish, TPC finish, which will make the change front, uh, permanent and it should never fail. And then there's TPC abort, which is in case we have to do a rollback and this should never fail neither. So this is the Python code, a bit shrinked for, to fit on one side of my slide, but as you can see, it's quite uh, small. And basically what we do, we loop over the data managers and we call each step of the protocols one after all. And once there is, if there is no problem, the commit have been called and it's okay, then we finish. If there is ever a problem, we go to roll back, we send an abort to every data manager, and then we roll back the Titan connection. It's easy. Oh. And now, how to write a data manager, for example, to send email, because we have one in Triton. Uh, why a data manager for email? Because it's a usual requirement in ERP to send an email when you do an action. And uh, to do that, Triton provides you uh, a function, send mail transactional, to do it. And it will use the Triton, uh, the SMTP data manager. Uh, to use it, you just have to define in your configuration file the uh, URL of your SMTP uh, server which is use the usual way to define URI. Uh, send main transactional is just this piece of code. So you can call it with a from address, which is the address in the from, the two addresses, which is a list of addresses that will receive the email, a message, which is a instance of an email message from the Python uh, uh, standard library, eventually with a transaction and a data manager, and if those are not specified, we will create some for you. Once, uh, and you can see on the previous line to the end, how you join a transaction. When you join a transaction, the data manager will go into this uh, this uh, list of data manager, we will do, in fact, in the join, we will make a search for another data manager that is the same. So we will compare them by equals and then return the data manager that we have. So you have now the data manager that you can use. And once on this data manager, you can put an email with the from address, the two addresses, and the message that you want to send. And when the transaction is finished, is committed, all those emails are sent. How are they sent? That's up to the data manager. So this is an overview of the, uh, the data manager. You have a simple init method, which is Quite simple, the queue of all the emails to send. A server, which is in fact a connection to the SMTP server. And then the put method, which basically happens in the queue. The equal method, which allows to compare data manager and receive the one that we want to use. And then the finish, which empty the queue and uh, reset the server. Uh, how to implement. <laughs> in fact, basically, there is nothing special to do. We have, uh, in TPC begin, we don't do anything. <laughs> in commit, we don't do anything either. Uh, of course, more complicated data manager might want to prepare to save the data and so on. If, for example, you write a file data manager, you might want to write the data on the file system under another name, 
And then when you finish, you move it to the name that you want to use or something like that. You have to think, of course, uh, it's just an ID. Then we have the vote. Uh, the, uh, the vote is just uh, a call to get the SMTP server. And the ID is that if that we are able to correctly connect to the server, then everything should be OK. In case sending the email fails, the worst thing that can happen is that the email is not sent. Yet. <laughs> uh, get SMTP server is just a function passing the U URI and uh, getting the, uh, the, the server. You can use SMTP, SMTPS, and SSL. And so the TPC finish. Uh, basically, just it's just a loop that loops over the, the queue of emails and sends the email using the uh, well, not exactly the the Python standard library, but just a wrapper around it. And uh, once all the messages are sent, the connection is closed and the queue is empty with the call to uh, TPC uh, aboard. We can also finish. What we do is that we close the connection and tidy up the queue and the server. And it's over. Questions? Uh, I was just wondering, in the uh, TPC finish, or the previous slide, uh, you checked if there was a server and I don't understand when it will not be set. No, just after the TPC finish. Here, the, the first line, if, if self yes. server is not known, uh, if, you, if you went to vote, I don't see how. Uh, I think it should be an error in vote if. Uh, ah, yes, indeed. There will be an error. So we will not go in TPC finish, and we will go in abort. And since there is no server, there's no need to close the connection. Um, yeah, maybe, indeed. No, uh, ju just one <laughs> No, indeed, uh, maybe. Is what it shows? Though? No, in fact, since uh, Jean is wondering, how is it possible that TPC server is not is known there? because we should have it in the vote if there is no error. Maybe the get SMTP server returns no if there is no server configured in the config file. Ah, yeah, maybe. I didn't paste everything, so uh, I have to. I, I'm just like, asking because uh, I tested it, uh, uh, and I didn't understand sometime I had, uh, uh, when I d just disconnected my, uh, uh, my uh, Ethernet, uh, yes. I, it didn't fail, but it didn't send the email. No, obviously. but it didn't fail because you received the uh, SMTP server the first time you put a message, maybe. Right. Any more questions? I know it's when you vote that, uh, the, yeah. You should make a bus. So, thank you, Niklas. You're welcome.